Hello everyone. Um, today we're going to be talking a little bit about vectors and particularly vectors in the context of physics. So uh, vectors are a really important concept in any algebra based physics, physics course. So that would be, you know, any intro college level physics class or AP physics. And so it's really important to know um, and understand what a vector is uh, before doing really anything in physics. And you're going to see it's uh, applications basically immediately once you start the first unit, which is usually uh, something related to kinematics. Okay, And so let's go ahead and first define what a vector is. Uh, a vector quantity is anything that has both magnitude and direction. Okay, so let me give you an example of that. Um, let's say I said a car is moving uh, 45 miles per hour in the northeast direction. Okay. This is an example of a vector because as you can see here, the 45 miles per hour uh, represents our magnitude. It's basically how much is something that we have. And then northeast gives us direction. So this is a vector quantity. Okay. Um, how is this different from a scalar? Uh, the distinction between a vector and scalar is very important. And the difference is that a scalar is just a quantity that describes magnitude. So if I would have said the car is moving at 45 miles per hour and not specified the direction, then this would be a scalar quantity. When we write out vector quantities, um, there's a specific way we do that. And um, to show you, I'm going to give you an example here. Let's say we have a velocity, okay, sorry, a velocity. Um, velocity, um, as you will learn later, and I'll also talk about this in my next video, is a vector. And so when we write the velocity, we're going to write or draw this kind of half arrow symbol above the variable to indicate that this is a vector, okay? And so you write, you know, velocity is 20 meters per second, um, to the left or something like that. Okay. Now I'll talk about um, how vectors are kind of described a little bit later in this video. And alternatively, when we talk about speed, um, so velocity is a vector, as I just said, and then speed is actually a scalar. So it only um, describes magnitude. Then we would only write the variable without the symbol on top. And so if I wrote 20 meters per second, I would just be giving you um, the speed of an object without telling you what direction it's going. So how are vectors represented graphically? Well, vectors are represented by um, a point uh, and then a line segment with an arrow at the opposite end, okay? And um, like I said, vectors have both a magnitude and a direction. So when we draw vectors, the, the length of the vector represents our magnitude, okay? So starting from the point to the end of the arrowhead, and then the actual arrow, the direction that the arrow is pointing gives us our direction, okay? Great. So really anything uh, like that, like this, these would all be vectors. Oh, sorry, that's not very straight, but you get the idea, okay? So since we're talking about vectors in the context of physics, I thought it would be helpful to go over a couple of common ways that vectors are described. And so the first way is just by using words that we commonly use to indicate direction. Um, just to give you an example of that, someone might say 20 meters to the left, right? And left would indicate our direction or 40 meters per second uh, upwards, let's say, or 9.8 meters per second squared downwards. Our second common way is by using the horizontal line as a reference. So here, for example, I've written out that we have a velocity, which you'll learn uh, later on that it is a vector. You have a velocity of 20 meters per second at a direction 40 degrees above the horizontal. And so what this would look like is if you had a horizontal line, we know that our vector, the length needs to represent um, 20 in some way, um, and then the direction that the arrow points 
is going to be 40 degrees above that horizontal line. And here, you know, I'm not drawing it on a uh, on graphing paper or anything like that, but presumably this would represent 20 meters per second, the length of that um, vector, okay? And of course, we can also have something like 40 degrees below the horizontal, which would then look like this, okay? Um, and the last uh, common way that I wanted to show is by using negative or positive signs, okay? And this one uh, requires that we first define the negative and positive direction. Um, this is very, very common in physics, which is why I wanted to go over it. Um, so for example, let's say that we define a y-axis as upwards being positive and downwards being negative. Okay, then um, saying that, uh, let's say, our, the acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. The negative sign would be what indicates our direction to us. So even if we don't have, you know, other words describing what direction the arrow needs to point, the negative sign indicates that to us. So this counts as a vector. Um, and so this would be acceleration since our units is meters per second squared. Um, and this would just show us that acceleration is pointing downward. The acceleration is acting downwards. And um, perhaps you've learned this already, but this is actually uh, the acceleration due to gravity. Um, I just wanted to throw that in there, okay? And also, if I wrote that um, acceleration is positive five meters per second squared, then, of course, the acceleration would just be acting upward. Okay, so the last thing that I wanna talk about in this video, and this is gonna be really quick, I'm not really gonna get into the details of it, um, but it is about how vectors are added and subtracted graphically. Um, so really quickly, let's say you're given a vector that looks like that. Say this is 30 degrees above and um, a vector that looks like uh, this. Uh, maybe this is 60 degrees above, okay? If I wanted to add these two vectors, then we would use what we call the tip to tail method where I would just take one of the vectors and basically I would take the other vector and move the um, tail of one vector to the tip of the other vector. And then when we draw the vector from, uh, when we draw a new vector from this point to the arrowhead of the second vector, then this whole thing right here this would be our resultant vector. So that's what we call um, anything that is the sum of two or more vectors. That's what we call the resultant vector, okay? Now, if we wanted to subtract them, if you wanted to subtract two vectors, that, like let's say they look like this, um, then you would turn one of them around. So if, if it was, you know, this minus that, you would turn this second vector around so that it now looks like that. And then you could just add those two together, which again, you do the tip to tail method and now the resultant vector would be this vector right here. Um, okay, so I know that was quick and I know that wasn't in very much detail. So maybe if you're focused more on how to um, add and subtract vectors graphically, then maybe take a look at another video or your textbook. But the reason why I didn't really get into the details here is because um, in physics, we're more worried about adding and subtracting vectors um, in a more mathematical way. Because as you can see, uh, even if you are maybe using a ruler and a protractor to really get the angles and the lengths exactly right, you would have a hard time getting a very exact a resultant vector just by drawing these things, okay? And so in our next video, I'm gonna talk about adding vectors um, and subtracting them using their components.
and this will give you a very exact, um, nice, precise uh, number for your resultant vector. Number and direction, of course, since this is a vector. Okay. Well, thank you for watching uh, this video. Hopefully it was helpful. I'll be uploading more videos on physics, chemistry, and biology. So uh, stay tuned for more.